What's up, guys? Uh, this is Anders Holmes, uh, the host of the Holmes Movies podcast. This is a uh, continuation of what I'm doing on our YouTube channel, where I do mini little solo film reviews. And I've decided to review another Joel Schumacher film, and it is the 1996 film A Time to Kill, starring Matthew McConaughey, Sandra Bullock, and Samuel Jackson. Like I mentioned in the Lost Boys episode, Joel Schumacher's career has been very varied. He's had some highs, but he's also had some lows, which comes in the form of Batman and Robin. Yes, Batman and Robin is considered one of the worst films of all time, and yes, it's a pretty bad film. But should all the blame be put on Joel Schumacher's shoulders? Probably, but not all of it. You have to take into consideration that he was pressured by the studios to do a film that was made directly for family-friendly audiences. When you look at Batman and Robin, and also in some cases Batman Forever, does this show that Joel Schumacher is a weak director? Not really. There are thousands of other w directors out there that are worse than Joel Schumacher and also better than him. I would have to say that he is actually a very good director. Yes, he's had a varied career. Yes, he's had quite a lot of failures, but it shouldn't take away from the fact that he is a director that has a lot of craft and skill and has made some very enjoyable films, some that are very fun and entertaining like The Lost Boys and also St. Elmo's Fire, but also films that are hard-hitting dramas that tackle themes that are very engrossing watches kind of like falling down which i would consider to be the best film that he made in this period during the 90s a time to kill is set in canton mississippi where jake brigands played by matthew mcconaughey a very young matthew mcconaughey this was one of his earlier films that he did he is a young aspiring lawyer who is struggling to keep his law firm afloat and doesn't have that many clients and is struggling to pay bills and has a wife and daughter at home. He takes on the very unwinnable case of Carly Haley. Carly Haley is played by Samuel Jackson, is who is a man who takes the law into his own hands, where he guns down the two racist white men who kidnap, beat, and rape his daughter. The film is very straightforward. It has extremely strong performances, particularly Matt McConaughey, who was in the early stages of his stardom and really does give actually probably one of the best performances of his career that afterwards was kind of sidelined by some really terrible rom-coms. It really just showcases his skill as an actor and he just brings such conviction and confidence to Jake Brigance. Towards the end of the film, during the trial of Carly Haley, he gives a very long speech to the jury where he tells them to close their eyes and he starts to give this very detailed account of what happened to Carly Haley's daughter, which brings the jury to tears. And at the end of that speech, he says, now imagine that she is white. It's a very powerful monologue and it really showcases Matthew McConaughey's skill as an actor and he's just as I said he's it's one of his best performance and he's terrific in it now while the film is very well put together and Joel Schumacher really gets to stretch his wings as a director the film is not without its flaws the film's themes and messages get very mishandled and it's and its message on taking the law into your own hands in vigilantism is very mishandled and it's quite hard to sort of see what the filmmakers were trying to really do with this. It's almost like they're condoning this action. There is not much emotional impact. It almost kind of comes across that Joel Schumacher really had a lot to work with, but one that came down to it and putting it all together, it's not as compressed as it could be, and maybe its message isn't as clear. At times, the film's focus is not in the right place and should have been more about the bond between Carly and Jake. Certain plot points and characters distract that. Sandra Bullock's character, I have to say, is very unnecessary. I don't really see why she was put into the film. She's not really given that much to do. There is a slight love story between her and Jake, but it's very distracting and it kind of goes against the character a little bit as he is married happily with a wife and kids. And I think it was, I don't know, maybe it was put in there to make the character seem a little bit flawed, but it didn't really go anywhere and was totally unnecessary. One of the sort of plot elements of the film that works quite well and almost mirrors what's going on in America at this point is Freddie Lee Cobb, played by Kiefer Sutherland. He is the brother of one of the men that Carl Lee Haley kills, and he is full of revenge and wants to seek justice in his demented, twisted way. He's very much present in the two thirds of the film, but once the film goes towards Carl Lee Haley's trial, he gets pushed to the side. If the film had more focus on the trial, it maybe would have been more straightforward and to the point. As well as the performances, those courtroom scenes really were the highlight. Watching A Time to Kill, I really got 
a bit nostalgic watching this film. I really like watching films that came out in the 1990s. The 90s were a very fun period in regards to cinema. A lot of films were becoming more mainstream. Action thrillers dominated the decade. Films were tackling quite serious issues, and there was a rise in independent American cinema. And also in this period, there were a lot of John Grisham adaptations, like A Time to Kill and The Client, and also The Chamber with Chris O'Donnell and Gene Hackman, which is the weakest of the ones that I have seen and The Firm, which I would actually have to say is the best adaptation. The film comes across more as a 70s paranoia thriller and has a very convincing performance from Tom Cruise. It's actually really exciting, and while it, it does exceed over two hours and goes towards a two-and-a-half-hour runtime, it's really exciting and very intriguing, and you are on the edge of your seat the entire time. Now, I'm not trying to diminish these films in any kind of way. They are very fun to watch, very well put together, and they have really good performances, and they worked in the time that they were released in. I would say A Time to Kill is a very well put together film. Yes, it might be a little bit overlong. Yes, its themes are very mishandled and it could have worked a little bit more of trying to give something for the audiences to think about. But at the end of the day, Joel Schumacher made a very good film and had really good performances. And I have to say, again, Matthew McConaughey gives a terrific performance and, you ha and that scene at the end of the film is a really really good example of how good of an actor he is. Well, thanks for watching another mini solo review from me. I will be posting these on our YouTube page and I will be trying to make these as continuously as I can. Do subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. It's the Holmes Movies Podcast and you can also find it on SoundCloud, Podomatic and Stitcher. I've been Anders Holmes. Have a good day. Thank you for watching.